here's what the Holy Spirit said. He said, I have many ministers and they are speaking on my behalf. But he said, what's missing is the urgency of their voice. These mega churches are really cognizant not to offend people. And they're really careful when they get up and preach to people that everybody leaves out there feeling really good. Preachers refuse to preach on the coming of Jesus Christ. Where's the urgency? I have never seen America in the place where we are right now. If you think that all the persecution is going to remain in Iraq against the Christians, you better think again. It's already coming into this country right now. If we don't tell people what they need to hear, God's going to hold us accountable and their blood will be on our hands. Whenever we preach, we've got to preach with an urgency in our voice that we need to be right with God if anything should happen to us. There's things right now in motion that may change our nation almost overnight. And for me to stand here and act like everything's all right, I can't do that. The politicians in Washington may can do that and lead you to believe that everything's going to be okay. But in the house of God, there's got to arise a siren that says, blast, 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 attention, attention, attention. Things are changing and they're changing quickly. We've got to have preachers in the pulpit that will say, watch out, warning, warning, red light, warning. People know something's going on in the Middle East. They know something's going on in Iraq, in Iran, in Damascus. They know about Iran. And people that's not even scripturally literate are trying to answer these things, and they're missing in a million miles. And God's saying to the preachers, get up and tell them. It's time to talk about what God's doing. People are seeking the Lord. People are seeking Christ. And if they don't find him in the church, where are they going to find him? I have a question. Where is the urgency? Morgan. Well, Reverend Gabriele Amorth made headlines around the world recently when he said the devil was present in the Vatican. You're talking about something very real, aren't you? Certo, realissimo. Dico se credete al Vangelo, credete all'esistenza del demonio. Absolutely, very real. As to the devil's presence in the Vatican, he says that's no surprise. He once had to perform an exorcism on another exorcist. Father, um, I've got an article here entitled, Two Eminent Churchmen Agree. Yes. Uh, that there actually is, this is a shocker to a lot of people. Yes. Uh, that there is, there are satanic practices going on at the Vatican. Could that be true? Yes. Do you want to, you want to say that? Uh, if I was a lawyer and you were on the witness chair, I'd say, would you say it? <laughs> it's out loud. Yes. Yeah. yes, it is. Now, when we say in the Vatican, it's at a certain level. And um, there's no doubt about it that there have been and still are practices that are uh, formally uh, venerating Lucifer, the prince of this world. There's no doubt about that. The Vatican itself has about eight resident exorcists. And uh, it, it uses those both there and in the two other cities that are devil ridden in Italy, Milano and Torino. Milan and uh, Turin. But there's no doubt about it that satanic or Luciferian practices, because it's really of the prince, and his name is Lucifer. It's really of the prince that these, uh, in veneration of him and the service of him, that these actions have taken place and do take place. So, Father, is it because this is such a holy place that it makes it a number one target for Lucifer? Or is it that there is a disease or a cancer within the Vatican uh, makes it sound like Watergate? <laughs> I'll tell you what I think, uh, Art. It is that amongst Luciferian organizations, there is a prophecy that if they can invade the citadel, and that's their name for the Vatican, they will have power for a thousand years. How close are they? Very close. 
Freemasonry is the center and queen of secret societies, binding members to secrecy by fearful oaths. This hallmark of evil is confirmed by the wicked aims and the wicked fruits of Freemasonry, which are the overthrow of Christianity. And there are enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ right back from the moment he was crucified. That is the explanation of the paralysis of the Catholic Church. The paralytic state in which the Catholic Church is, the Freemasons are in control and Satan has been enthroned. And until some pope has the power and the courage to chase the devil out, a large number of the leading churchmen are at the service of Satan through Freemasonry. If you ask how can possibly a Catholic churchman get into Freemasonry, the churchmen are tempted to join what they can't lick. That's the basic temptation. They kid themselves that this process is going to lead to a bright and brave new world. And so that the way in which a Catholic today is really Catholic is not by staying faithful to the fuddy-duddy old crusty dogmas and doctrines. They must join this Masonic process rather than resist it. Freemasonry plays a very important part in how the church has got into its present mess. Humanly speaking, the situation is hopeless. The Lord God has allowed it to get out of control. It's a punishment. A lot of people today don't want the truth. They like their slush and their mush and their lies. It's a punishment who want to become Freemasons. They're then the wave of the future. They're on the winning side instead of being on the losing side. Woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. If you take this old-fashioned view of Catholicism like we're taking, we're absolute losers. We've lost. It's hopeless. The future is dark, humanly speaking, dark, dark, dark. There is no hope for it. The Masons have won, the bad guys are in control, and there's no future. When we are successful, and we will be, there is a clear clash, a clear and head-on clash between Jesus Christ on one side and Satan on the other, which is the mainspring of history. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order.